In this tutorial, uh, I'm going to walk around how to use uh, CouchDB a little bit. Uh, I've just got the uh, interface here, uh, the Futon interface that you can use to interact with a CouchDB database. Uh, this is sort of a, a visual representation of uh, the database, so it's a little bit easier to see uh, what's going on. So if you've been following my blog at all recently, you may have seen that I've uh, done some tutorials on how to use CouchDB. I'm doing a series on using CouchDB with Ionic. Uh, but I thought I'd just do this quick little video to, uh, I guess, give a little more hands-on feel uh, to it and actually have a look at playing around with a little bit of data and seeing what that looks like, uh, as opposed to the theory that I have in the tutorials. Uh, so if you haven't read them, I'd recommend uh, giving them a read. I, I go into depth about uh, some of the ways that you do things in CouchDB. Uh, it's very different, uh, especially if you're used to a relational style database uh, like uh, MySQL, something like that. Uh, the way in which you, you store the data and you retrieve the data is very different. So I'm just going to do a really quick walkthrough of this interface here and we'll play around with adding some data and how you might go about uh, querying that. Uh, I'm also using a new microphone for this video. Uh, this is my portable uh, travel microphone, I guess. I don't have my usual uh, one that I use at home, so uh, if the audio is a bit weird, I apologize for that. Hopefully it sounds all right. So I've got the Futon interface up now. Uh, so once you have CouchDB installed, you'll be able to access uh, Futon. Uh, you can do that just by going to this URL here. Uh, we'll see this icon up here that I can open the admin console from. That's this. Uh, but essentially this is just uh, a way to view your databases that you have installed and then interact with them. Um, if you're not already familiar, uh, the primary way in which you uh, interact with the CouchDB database is through making HTTP requests. Uh, this allows you, I guess, to just use it in a, in a way you might use, say, like PHP MyAdmin if you're used to that. Uh, it's just an interface where you can click around and add uh, data manually. So these are just some databases that I have uh, set up previously, uh, mostly just a bunch of junk databases. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new database and we're just going to go through a sort of example of what a, a blog type database might look like. And it's going to be a really simple example, but I just want to show you some of the, the key concepts. So you can create a new database by clicking create database up in the top left here. And we'll just call this uh, blog example. So click on create and that'll create the database for us and now we are inside of that database. And so data in, uh, in CouchDB is stored as documents uh, which is different to uh, say like the tables you may be used to in a relational uh, style database. Uh, I keep using the example of relational databases because it's, it's very common. A lot of people sort of grew up on that sort of stuff. Um, maybe you don't have any experience with database uh, databases at all, in which case that's probably even better. Uh, you don't have these sort of uh, concepts you need to unlearn since this is so different. Uh, but essentially a document is it's just a JSON string, uh, same as a, so any kind of JSON object you create in uh, normal JavaScript. And I guess the concept with a document is that uh, the idea is that a document is a self-contained thing, uh, like an invoice or an email, where it has all the data that you need. And that isn't always strictly the case, but I guess that's where the name document comes from. So what we might do in this database, if it's for a blog, uh, we would want to add posts. And the way in which you structure data with, uh, with a NoSQL uh, document-based database like this, uh, it really depends on the application. There's no really uh, rules like there is with a relational style database. There's these sort of best practice ways to do things. Uh, with NoSQL, it's kind of uh, more open to interpretation. Uh, there's different ways you can do things and it really depends on specifically what your architecture is like. Um, but there are some sort of common themes that are used and in a lot of ways they are similar to what you do uh, in a relational style database. So if we have we have a blog, uh, we want to have posts for that blog, uh, one thing you can do is to store each blog post as its own document. Uh, so that's what we're going to do uh, right now. So to do that we can just hit new document and uh, we have to assign an ID to our documents. Uh, this can be assigned automatically by CouchDB uh, but we can also just turn this into something a little bit more useful as well because uh, IDs are primarily what you use to retrieve data. So if you want to grab a document, you grab it by its ID. 
So in the case of a blog post, it's going to make sense to uh, have this as, say, the the slug, the uh, the URL for the um, uh, for the blog post. So if the title was uh, my blog post, we could have that as the ID, and now we can easily retrieve that based on the name rather than having to supply this random uh, string of numbers and letters. So we use that for the ID, and then there's going to be some other fields that we're going to want to use as well. So obviously we'll want something like a title. Um, we'll just call it my blog post. And perhaps we'll have an author field uh, as well. So what you might notice here with uh, with these uh, document-based databases, we don't have any predefined schema that we need to um, make our data fit into. Uh, again, back to the relational style database example, before you even add data, you define what exactly you want to store in each table. Uh, with this, we're just kind of making it up as we go along. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that you know, no thought needs to be put into how you store your data. It's just that it, it's, it's flexible and it doesn't have to be done up front. With this document I'm creating here, I don't have to adhere to any strict format. If I wanted to, say, add some extra field, like maybe a co-author field, I could add this to this document but not add it to others. But I'm probably going off on a bit of a tangent there. I don't want to get into anything too complicated here. I just want to focus on the basics and just walk through how this, this works in general. So we'll just add one more field. Uh, we'll add content because it makes sense for a blog to have some kind of uh, content to a post. Uh, and we'll just say, this is my blog post. And to save that document, just hit save in the top left. And once that document is saved, you'll see it adds this rev field. And it's one dash and then a bunch of random numbers and letters. And so with CouchDB, it keeps track of revisions. Uh, and this is uh, important to how it deals with uh, conflicts and concurrency and stuff like that, where multiple people are trying to edit the same thing. Uh, I'm not going to touch on that in this video. Uh, I'd recommend reading the, I think, the first post I did uh, that explains that concept. But essentially what happens here is that every time we make an update to this um, to this document, this revision will increase by one. So right now it's one dash, but if I make an update, uh, say if I change the author from Josh to Joshua, uh, if I save this now, you'll see that the, the revision there updated to two. Uh, so we can see how many times this uh, post has been modified. Okay, so I'm happy with that document for now. Now I'm going to jump back into the... Um, the main page of the, the database here and you can see we have my blog post there now with its ID of my blog post and you can see it's the revision here as well. So now I can do the same thing again I could add another blog post using that same format uh, but I might also want to store uh, say comments for uh, a blog post and so the question then is well, where do we store the comments? Now one thing you could do uh, with this uh, document based no SQL structure uh, you could add the comments directly to the document itself. So I could add another field here, uh, call it comments, and then this could just be an array of all the comments that have been added to the post, uh, which has its benefits because all we have to do is grab the document, make one request to uh, retrieve that document from the database, and then we have the blog post with all of its, uh, the title, the author, the content, and we have all of its comments as well. So that's certainly something you could do. Uh, Any time a comment is added, you just need to retrieve that document, save the comment, uh, add it to the, the comments array, and then save that document back. But there are problems with that, in that if um, a lot of people are updating this document all the time, there's going to be a lot of clashes there. Uh, so it's perhaps not the, the best structure uh, in this case. So we're not going to go with that for this example. Uh, I'll just delete that. Uh, instead, we'll use another sort of popular structure and that's to have each comment as its own document. Uh, so if I create a new document now, uh, we can go through that same sort of process. Uh, again, we need to supply an ID for that comment because it's a, it's a document, every document needs an ID. Uh, we'll just accept the, uh, the default ID here. We could change this to something more useful, perhaps like the, uh, the, the commenter's username combined with the name of the blog post or something like that, something that's going to be unique, preferably. Um, and then you can do fancy things with grabbing that, but uh, we'll just leave the default ID for now. And then we will, of course, perhaps have the author of the comment. Uh, I'm just going to be the author for everything here. And then 
also obviously what they said so I have some content for that as well and perhaps I'll just say uh, hello uh, so the problem we have now is that we have these multiple documents uh, some are uh, blog posts and some are comments so we need a way to tell them apart uh, when we're querying the data and that's going to become apparent when I uh, walk through that in just a second uh, so what is commonly done is to also include a type field to identify what type of document it is uh, so I'll add a type of comment to identify that this is a comment and I'll save that uh, but that also means I'm going to have to go back into this post and we also want to be able to identify that this is a post and not a comment uh, so I'll add a field here we we'll add the, the type field and we'll add a post uh, if you like there you can also identify what uh, type of document a document is by uh, inference I guess as well you could say well if it has if it has a title uh, then it's obviously a blog post so you can kind of infer that from your queries uh, but having a, a dedicated type field does make that process a bit easier okay so what I might do now is I'll just go and add a, um, a couple more oh, so I should save that uh, I'm going to add a couple more examples uh, I just add a couple more uh, posts and uh, comments perhaps uh, because next I want to show you how to query this data how you go about retrieving it uh, and it's not going to be that interesting with just two so I'll quickly go ahead and just add a couple things now actually before I do that one important thing that I've uh, actually missed here is um, how do you then uh, we have a comment we have a blog post how do we identify what a blog post a comment belongs to and like we added a type field to identify that it's a comment we also need to add a field that ties it back to the document it belongs to uh, so to do that we could add a uh, we could add a field called post that identifies what post that belongs to by using that post ID uh, which was I've forgotten I think it was my my simple blog I have no idea I have to go back and check that we'll go with that for now uh, and we'll check it my blog post uh, I'll just update that and you'll see as I change that um, the revision will change okay so now we have a way to tie this comment to this post so as I mentioned I'll go through now and I'll just add in a few more examples okay so I have a, a bit more data here now not that much but uh, I've got three blog posts and two comments and both of those comments actually belong to the my blog post uh, post uh, so what I want to do now is uh, run some queries to grab the data uh, so I may want to I may want to do a, a couple different things with this data I may want to uh, say get a list of all the blog posts uh, if I want to display them uh, in a list on my blog I need to be able to grab those uh, I may also want to grab all of the comments uh, for a blog post so uh, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, this thing called MapReduce uh, to grab that data uh, through using a, a view in CouchDB and so a view in CouchDB is uh, it's defined in this thing called a design document which I'm not going to cover in this uh, video so when you're actually setting up your application that's where you'll store these uh, MapReduce views that you're creating uh, but for now we're just going to use um, uh, we're going to use a thing called a temporary view here which is just sort of a thing to play around with to see what kind of views we can uh, create uh, so if I go into that interface here you can see the the map and reduce uh, options here so I would recommend uh, reading my tutorials that I've written for a full explanation on what map reduce is exactly uh, but is the it is the primary sort of way you work with the data uh, with querying the data uh, in CouchDB and so what the map function does uh, is it'll run this function on every single document in the database and then something will happen in this function that you determine and then you emit what documents you want to add to this list of data and so that's what your your view will be uh, so it's going to be much easier to see when I actually uh, run a map function in just a moment uh, but essentially it's just this list of rows of data uh, and then you can query for that data uh, you can retrieve that and use that in some way and the reduce uh, function is uh, sort of an optional uh, thing you can do after you 
uh, map some data. Uh, you can sort of use that to run uh, operations over the data as a, a whole. You could um, say, for example, with a map, you might retrieve a list of all the comments. Uh, with a reduce function, you then might uh, do a count of all those comments and sort of reduce that to a number like 10 uh, to represent how many comments there are. Uh, but we won't really be relying on the reduce function here. We're just going to fo uh, focus on using uh, the map function. So I gave two examples just a second ago. I said I may want to retrieve all of the uh, the blog posts uh, for the blog, and I may want to retrieve comments for specific blog posts. So let's focus on the example of retrieving all of the blog posts first. So we have this function here that's going to run for every document in the database. And what I want to do, uh, since we have a field that identifies something, a document as a post, all we have to do is that a if dot dot type equals post, then we want to emit that uh, post or that document. And so what emit does is you have to supply that, uh, you have to supply it with a key and a value. Uh, and so the key is what will be able to be used to retrieve that uh, specific um, row of data from the view that's created and then whatever's in here will be the value that's associated with that key and so what we'll do in this case is we'll just use the post title uh, as the as the key uh, so we use dot dot uh, title and then we'll just supply the whole document uh, as the value in this case so if I run this now it creates this uh, view for us uh, and so this is what uh, uh, CouchDB will create when you create these um, uh, MapReduce functions in your design documents. It creates these views that you can then uh, query for your data. And so in this view here we have a list of uh, every one of the blog posts that we have. And so if I wanted to then retrieve one of these, all I have to do is supply the key, um, uh, which is uh, the title of the blog post. A better key to use actually, which I did intend to use, I don't know why I used title. Uh, it'd probably be better to use the actual ID of the document here. Uh, so now we can just supply the, the ID of that document, another blog, my blog post, the, uh, the slug that is used for that blog post. We could supply that in a query and then we could grab a specific one from this view. And in this case, the, the value is just the entire document. So we can grab that and do whatever we want with it uh, to update a document in CouchDB. Uh, you just need to supply its ID and its uh, revision. Uh, so we could then modify that document and then uh, send it back to the database to update this blog post if we wanted to. Uh, so let's try the other example I gave now, which was comments. Uh, so this example is going to be pretty similar. Uh, this time we'll just check for the uh, document type of uh, comment. And then what we will emit is uh, we will instead of uh, emitting the uh, ID of that document, if we use the, the post that it's related to as the key, uh, we can then grab all of the comments for a specific uh, post key. Uh, so again, I'll just emit the entire document as the value, uh, which will be the document for the comment. Uh, so if I run that now, we've got a, a new view here, so it would be a, a second view that we create. And you can see that we've got the two comments here uh, with the key of my blog post. So if I want to retrieve all of the comments for my blog post, uh, all I have to do is query this view, uh, supply the ID, uh, the key I'm looking for, and so then we'd be able to grab both of these and then display it uh, wherever we wanted. Uh, so if I'd actually added um, comments to other uh, blog posts, you'd also see those pop up here under the ID for that uh, blog post. And I might actually do that just uh, as an example. I'll so we'll just jump back into the documents view here and we'll create a, a new document. Uh, we'll give it an author of, uh, we'll use Josh again, add a comment of hello and a type of comment to identify that this document is a comment and then just the post that it's related to. Um, I think yet another was one of the other ones. So I'll save that, and I'll just jump back in here, make sure, yeah, that seems correct. So that comment should now be associated with that blog post. Uh, so if we go back to our temporary view again, and we still have that map function there actually, so I'll just run that. And now you can see that yet another pops up there as well. So this view 
uh, is a list of uh, all comments and what blog posts they're associated with. And we can do just about anything we want with this map function. It's a really powerful way to query data. These are just some really simple examples, but uh, there is a lot you can do with it. And then uh, with the addition of a reduce function as well, you can also perform some pretty complicated uh, calculations. Uh, but in, in this case, maybe we'd want to just work out things like the number of um, posts or comments or uh, maybe the amount of times a user's logged in in the last week. Uh, things like that uh, would all be pretty uh, straightforward to write in uh, with this sort of format. It's a bit of a, uh, I guess, a paradigm shift if you are used to writing uh, using like structured query language, uh, writing queries in the form of uh, select all from something where something, uh, joining tables, that sort of thing. It is, it is a little bit uh, weird to do things this way, but I actually quite enjoy working with this style of um, this data querying and, and manipulation. Uh, so this was just a really, obviously, simple introduction to using CouchDB. It's not intended. Uh, it's not intended to be uh, sort of an all-encompassing introduction. I just uh, more or less wanted to jump into this futon interface and play around a bit and show you what uh, the data looks like, what a uh, MapReduce function looks like, uh, although we didn't actually write a reduce function in this case, but um, I did write uh, pretty detailed tutorials uh, which covered a lot of theory, uh, but not much practicality, I guess, so I just wanted to uh, show people what I'm talking about a little bit. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.